March 23rd, 2012. I was going to school in Utah. I was like a junior in college, studying international relations, and I was looking for an internship. Hey, there it is. We're just filming here. I was on the State Department's website. The State Department is like the foreign ministry here in the United States. And they had an intro video, like a promotional video explaining their internship program, and it was very poorly done. So in a weird moment of, I don't even know what got into me, I sent these people an email and I said, well, I said some pretty mean things. I noticed the promo video you guys are using is extremely poorly done. I would like to make a video that is more attractive and helpful. What? Man, 2012 me was a weird me. Let me know if you would like me to make something and submit it. I just think that this program could be more attractive if the information was presented in a more effective way, is how I put it. Hold on a second. This is 2012. Okay, I didn't know very much about video in 2012. I wasn't making very good videos. I was making stuff like this and like this, and it was just not very good. In addition, I didn't know how to do motion graphics. I wanted to learn how to do it, but I didn't know how. And yet here I am promising to make a promotional video, which was very likely going to be all animation, and I had no animation skills. That's not true, actually. To my credit, I had one animation under my belt and it looked like this. That's an owl and a circle around the owl and it and then it falls and then it goes down. It just down. Um, that was my one portfolio piece. Okay, so that's me in 2012 and yet here I am proposing to the State Department that I'm going to make them a promotional video that is quote, attractive and helpful. Okay. Cool, so what happens next? They responded enthusiastically and said, yes, if you can make us a video for free, we would gladly take your video and put it on our site. In this moment, something happened in my brain. I chalk this up as one of the inflection points in my life. It's something that would continue to happen throughout my career and that would take my animation skills from this to this. I'm gonna call this process, this thing that happened, a speed boost. Just like in Mario Kart, when you're like cruising along and you see those flashy arrows on the ground and you like hit them and they speed boost you forward. It's like a hack. It's like something that gives you more speed than you naturally have. After I got that email back from the State Department, I began to devour tutorials. I began to just focus on this video all day and all night. I began to learn so much faster than I'd ever learned before. I call this, what was happening to me, excited accountability. So after three weeks of intense, excited accountability, I made this video. My first real motion graphic project, unless you count the owl, which was technically my first, and it's pretty dear to my heart. Love that owl. Let's face it, when it comes to internships with the State Department, not all college students can afford to travel to Washington, D.C. or overseas. Okay, I mean, it's not like great. I went from knowing nothing truly to knowing a ton about motion graphics and having got my hands dirty for the first time. And that was facilitated through this excited accountability. And soon, VSFS will begin the micro-volunteering program. What's that, you ask? Here's a problem. When you want to learn something new, you become passionate about it. If you want to learn to bake bread, suddenly you have a super high tolerance for reading about yeast fermentation. If you want to learn photography, suddenly you're able to sit down and learn about shutter speed and aperture, these fairly boring principles, but now you suddenly have the attention span of like a genius. Two weeks goes by and suddenly that passion, that tolerance for boring stuff becomes thinner and thinner and you eventually peter out. This was me in 2012. I had made it through a few weeks of learning this stuff when my motivational fuel started to burn up. I started to feel less and less inclined to actually sit through the tutorials. Then I wrote that email. I got that response and this happened. My motivation was back, my tank was full, I was going fast, I had accountability, I was excited, and suddenly my ability to persist through this kind of difficult process of learning increased like tenfold. 
So this is easier said than done. And a lot of people ask me like, how do you actually go about learning this stuff? Yeah, you've got the speed boost. Yeah, you have like the excited motivation. But like, what do you actually do to learn this if you don't have film school or some sort of structure to learn? The answer to me and kind of the key to my career when it comes to learning this stuff has been the internet. On your mark, get set. We're riding on the internet. I have a really soft spot in my heart for learning online and because of that, I reached out to Skillshare to sponsor this video because Skillshare is one of the sites that I've used over the years to learn and refine my visual storytelling skills. Skillshare is like this giant repository of tutorials. It's like 10 bucks a month and you get access to like 25,000 tutorials. If you wanna learn animation like I did in 2012, there are tons and tons of tutorials on this site that will teach you all different aspects of animation. There's one specifically called Animated Infographics and Data Visualization, which was kind of the style that I was, I was doing in, that, in 2012. It's really good, like quality teaching. So if you're kind of in a place right now where you want to learn something new, whether it's animation or a million other skills, Skillshare's got like tons of different topics, then go click the link. And if you are one of the first 500, you will get two months for free, meaning you don't have to pay. And then after that, it's 10 bucks a month. Go start learning stuff. Skillshare doesn't have any influence over this video or what I say or anything, but they did want to partner with me on this video because this is something that I truly 100% believe in and want other people to experience as well. You just don't need to travel abroad. Okay, so am I recommending that everyone reach out to the State Department and offer to redo their promo video? No. This is an example that illustrates a point of putting yourself in a situation of excited accountability. First, let's talk about what you need to make this situation work. It's right there within excited accountability. First, you need to be excited. Whatever situation you put yourself in that's going to teach you these skills, you have to like be interested in it. You have to align with whatever the message is or whatever the project is. That sort of passion and excitement about the project is going to be a key part of the fuel. The other aspect of this, the other side of it, is the accountability part. There needs to be a good amount of pressure. Not like the anxiety, like fear-based pressure. Like that's actually like a speed bump, not a speed boost. I mean the type of pressure that like you want to deliver because you want to impress. And if you don't deliver, you'll feel a little bit like, ooh. That sort of pressure needs to be there because that's gonna propel you forward as well. A good balance of excitement and accountability or pressure together will make a situation that is primed for you to learn and to have this speed boost. So let me give you some examples that aren't State Department. Maybe you want to learn how to cook. So instead of just like telling yourself, okay, I wanna learn how to cook, you can invite a friend or some friends over for a dinner party and you are gonna be the one to cook and you tell them that. If you are interested in the cuisine or the dish that you're cooking and you feel a little bit of pressure because people are coming over to your house, suddenly you've just created a situation of excited accountability. All right, so let's step up the stakes one more notch to a professional level. Let's say you have some video skills, but they're not in the place that you can actually go pitch like a brand or an organization or a news outlet to make video for them. You don't have those skills yet, but you want to acquire them. In this case, I suggest going to a nonprofit or a group that doesn't have a ton of marketing budget and say, hey, I will make a video for you. And you develop a kind of a pseudo professional relationship, even though money's not changing hands and it's not that professional, the stakes are not so high that if you don't deliver, you're like reneging on a contract, but they're high enough that you want to deliver. And suddenly you'll be in that excited accountability situation and here comes the speed boost. The last example I wanna give you is another one that comes from my experience. Now we're talking summer of 2015. Thanks to this excited accountability process, I had done it several times with a bunch of different organizations. I had learned quite a bit of skills and I was able to get a legitimate job in motion graphics. Eventually that led me to getting a job at Vox where I was doing motion graphics and animation. I wanted to take my skills to the next level and specifically I really wanted to get into doing documentaries. 
I had never done documentaries. I had never made a legitimate like documentary out in the field, but I wanted to learn. So I went to my boss at Vox and I said, hey, what if I went out and made an explainer like we do here, but I did it in the field, pointing my camera at things, getting interviews, and then animating on top of that. At that time, Vox was a startup, and Joe, my boss, was like, could you write it and film it and edit it and animate it all on your own? And if so, like, go for it. And I was like, okay. So I pitched this Cuba story and I was given some great support from the people at Vox to be able to have, do this experiment. But the message was very clear. You can do this, but it needs to be good. Meaning if we're gonna invest in this new format that's a little bit costlier to have you go travel to Cuba, then it has to be like worth the resources. In the summer of 2015, that familiar feeling came upon me. I remember I was sitting in a hotel in Miami the night before I was flying to Cuba. There was $2,000 in cash sitting on the bed because in Cuba they don't take bank cards. So you have to like literally bring a ton of cash, which is terrifying. And I'm sitting there with this mandate of if this isn't good, it's not gonna happen again. Like 100% responsibility on the situation that I've put myself in. Excited? Yes, I was definitely excited. I mean, look at that face. That's an excited me, but also accountable, pressure, responsibility. Both of those things were happening to me at the most extreme levels that they had ever happened to me in my life. And there's something that I can't even explain that's just like spilling out of me. I've now done this process a bunch of times, but this was like the most intense. So that night I did what I had been doing for weeks up into that moment, which is downloading videos, videos that I really loved from like Vimeo and YouTube, downloading them, and opening them up in QuickTime and watching them frame by frame and writing down, oh, that edit was really fast and it went from this angle to that angle. Oh, the guy moved his camera kind of like this. That was really interesting. I'm gonna do that in Cuba. Like a giant list of exactly what I was gonna do to up my skills. Because I was in this highly motivated, highly responsible and accountable situation, that learning was sinking in. I was learning in a whole new way. At the time, I watched a Skillshare course about creative transitions, like how to move your camera around in these kind of creative ways to build out transitions in your videos. And like I was devouring this tutorial, like knowing that I was gonna have to use this stuff in this situation that I had put myself in. I learned so much. I was so ready to go to Cuba and perform. In the end, I made three videos and they were the best videos that I had ever made in my life. That was another inflection point for me, that Cuba trip. I feel grateful to Vox for giving me that opportunity. Joe, my boss, was very, very like open to those types of experiments. And so I'm incredibly grateful to, to Vox for that, but I'm also grateful for what happens to the human brain when you feel that excited accountability. You can really, really learn a lot without the need of school. So thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video, but also thanks to Skillshare for just being around, for being a repository of high quality learning on the internet for 10 bucks a month so that all of us can access it. Again, if you want to try Skillshare out for two months for free you can click the link down in the description and just see if it like is interesting to you good teaching and good learning visual learning like you see on skillshare is a way to kind of help pave that process and make it a little bit easier so i hope this is helpful um i would love to hear your feedback about this process and what we talked about today and yeah i gotta go back to editing borders because there's just so much borders to edit okay bye